Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. On behalf of the uh, cathedral community, can I offer you the very, very warmest of welcomes to this, your cathedral. You are most welcome indeed. It's an exciting time for those who are starting university. I remember my daughter taking her to Leeds. She cried all the way up from Lincoln to Leeds. My son, as we drove him down to Bath, couldn't wait to get rid of mum and dad. And I suspect between those two extremes, we have had all those emotions this last few days and weeks as we have arrived at Bishop Grosteste University. Whatever, I know that you are welcomed into the most compassionate and caring environment, and I also know that you are very welcome at this, your cathedral church. And I don't say that lightly, it is your cathedral. It's not mine, it's not those who look after this building. It is here for each and every one of you. And we show that as well to all our undergraduates by the knowledge that if you produce your student card, you can get straight into this cathedral day, possibly not night, but every day completely free of charge. And that is a token just to say in a material way how welcome you are to this church. We value our connection immensely between BGU and the cathedral and we hope that you will take that baton on as you start your time at the university. Again, you are most welcome and we hope to celebrate with you as you go through your university careers and then eventually come again to this cathedral church for your graduation. You are most welcome. Thank you. I hereby declare this congregation assembled for the matriculation of students to be open. I welcome all who are gathered here for this ceremony. High Sheriff, Madam Mayor, Madam Chancellor, Mr. Subdean, distinguished guests and members of the Bishop Grosteste University community, welcome to this very special matriculation ceremony, which every year is held on or as near as possible to Bishop Grosteste Day, which in fact is tomorrow, the 9th of October. We are one of very few universities in the country which holds such a ceremony, the purpose of which is to welcome new students and to mark the passage into the academic community. And I have to say, you look absolutely wonderful in your academic dress. You have all scrubbed up extremely well indeed. You have all had your own individual journeys which have brought you here today on this very significant landmark in your educational and professional life. And I can imagine that many of you have been planning, preparing for, and anticipating this new experience for many years. And you have your families, those who care for you, your friends and communities all behind you, supporting you and encouraging you to move on to this next phase in your life. And I can assure you that you are going to have life-changing experiences here at BG. Recently, someone asked me the question, did you go to university when you were young? And that made me think back, and I've just realized it is 40 years to the month when I started university for the first time. I came from a very small island community on the west coast of Scotland. And so to go to the big city and university represented a huge change for me. 
And although I had been preparing and planning for the move psychologically for years, when I actually got there, it was a massive shock to the system. And my first three weeks were amongst the most miserable, depressing and alienating in my whole life. But the good news is that things got better and I had a wonderful three years in that city and at that university. Shall I tell you what marked the turning point for me which got me out of that misery? I have never told anyone else this in 40 years. You are the first to hear this confession. I joined the Scottish Country Dancing Society. <laughs> and I don't know why that worked, but after a weekend away in the Highlands with that group, the world started to look brighter and I felt a lot better. Now, I can't re recommend that society for you because as far as I know, we don't yet have a Scottish Country Dancing Society, although we do have a dance society. But the message is I would encourage you in everything you do to get involved. Get involved in your courses, in societies and clubs, and also in external activities such as volunteering. Take advantage of the many opportunities which will present themselves to you during your studies. And I commend in particular the Graduate Attribute Excellence Award which you'll hear more about, and I believe there's a key ring on your seats advertising the graduate attributes. But my hope for you is that you will have a transformational experience at BG, where you are going to be changed through gaining new knowledge, acquiring new skills, developing these graduate attributes, learning from your lecturers, from those in the same discipline and also from those in different subject areas. You're going to be developing your critical skills, you're going to be creative, you're going to be analysing evidence in order to produce new knowledge. And all of that will not just take place in your lectures or tutorials or placements, because much new learning takes place in informal settings through your own research through conversation, through learning with and from others. That's why you will see some of the lecturing staff sitting outside Curiosity or the refectory. They are not just drinking coffee, they're engaging in professional dialogue and creative thinking, or that's what they tell me anyway. <laughs> and I hope that you will spend a lot of your time in deep thinking, problem solving, making new connections, and among it all, having some fun. A report produced just last month by the group Unite Students asked students across the UK about their experiences in their first year. And they found that friendships play a crucial role, both practically and emotionally, in students' experiences. And here you will make friends who will remain friends for the rest of your life. And one final piece of advice I would offer is look after yourselves and also look after and look out for each other because we are all part of the BG community. And if you need help, ask for help. If you see others in difficulty, encourage them to seek help because that's why we are all here, to support you through your studies in whichever way we can. And when you see me around the campus, please do tell me how you're getting on. I have spoken to a few of you already, although I wasn't quite sure whether it was me you wanted to talk to or Jonty the white cat who was doing somersaults in the tables outside Curiosity. He spends much of his time helping out in the IT department but he is very much part of the campus. So as I finish for now, my colleagues and I are delighted that you have chosen BG. We are thrilled to welcome you and to receive you as new members of the BGU community. And I personally 
am very much looking forward to following your progress through your studies and to meeting you again here at the cathedral to receive your qualification in due course. I wish you every success because your success will be our success as a university. Thank you. I now invite all students to stand to be formally admitted into the university. Please stand. By the authority of the university, I admit all new students presented at this ceremony as members of Bishop Grosstest University. I now call upon the Registrar and Secretary to subscribe formally the matriculation roll. The ceremony of matriculation marks the beginning of formal membership of the university. As Registrar, I am honoured to subscribe the matriculation roll as part of the university regulations. So as a mark of that friendship and community that I spoke about, I would ask you all to shake hands with those around you to welcome them. Good afternoon to you all. Have you all shook hands? Let's sit down for a bit then. I'm Alan Foster. I'm your Students' Union President. I'm one of the people that fight day to day for your academic interests. Now you're enrolled into your programmes of study, you're officially members of the SU. Don't worry, we're not Netflix, we're not going to charge you a subscription fee, it's just done. Congratulations on securing your place here within the BGU community and in turn your academic communities, social communities, the community of Uphill Lincoln, Lincoln and Lincoln in its entirety. I'm not going to stand here and tell you that you're going to love every second of the, your time at uni, nor am I going to say that these are going to be the easiest years of your life. I can't tell you how exactly these next few years are going to go for you. You're all individuals with individual reactions to situations your own previous experiences, and you've all got different expectations and ideals. What I will say though is this, BGU is the most inclusive and nurturing university I've had the pleasure to experience, and I've experienced a fair few. Two first hand, and around 20 indirectly. I mention your individuality for a reason. Bishop Grosstest University and Bishop Grosstest Students' Union Treat each of you with the respect for your individuality and diversity you all deserve. Not only this, but both the university and SU aim to help you grow as individuals with tailored, development, uh, tailored approaches for your learning and development. The university will help you become an academic and aid your intellectual growth. The students' union is there to make sure that they do it in the way that's right for you by holding your academic interests as our priority. You must be thinking, why is this guy standing up there? I'm here for you. I was elected in March by the current second and third years and some of the postgraduate st students that are going to be sat here today. I'm elected to represent your views to the university. I'm going to give you a little bit of my personal experience. When I was 16, I went to college and I was excited for the course. Turns out when I got there, the course wasn't for me and I had to make the decision to either stick it out and become someone that I didn't want to be or did I change the direction of my travel. So I dropped out. I went to work for a year then went back to college to uh, study in a vastly different set of courses. Then when the time came I applied to the U for university and I got accepted for, to my first choice university and I was excited. I loved it, every second of it, until my second year 
when the course changed direction. And it wasn't in line with what I wanted with my education. The same decision came to pass. Be better or be something I'm not. So I made the decision to, to withdraw my study. I dropped out. I've been studying at university for five years. I graduated in, in July. I'm now the president of the SU, which looks a bit all right on your CV, I'm not gonna lie to you. And I plan on studying after my presidency is over. I want a master's and I wanna become a lecturer. I understand that that might not sound relevant, but I assure you it is. It's difficult to start university. It's especially difficult to enter into an environment you're unfamiliar with. Some of you are care leavers. Some of you will, will have complex needs or develop complex needs whilst at university. Some of you will be for the first in your family to enter into higher education. I know some of you that are returning from study after time away or you're changing career prospects. What you've got in front of you is a road you've chosen to go down. I'm here to ask you to not just follow the straight path forward, take the odd detour. Get to see the sights around you. If the road ends up being a dead end, don't be afraid to make your own path. Backtrack and find your bearings. It's okay to start again, because you're not starting from scratch, you're starting from experience. As long as the choices you're making benefit you, you needn't worry about the length of time it takes to get there. The destination may change or it may stay the same, but make sure you try your best to enjoy the journey. Life's short, university is a lot shorter. Please, please, please enjoy it. If there is one thing I, some, uh, I get told by friends and classmates from both my university careers, it's that they wish they'd got more involved. There are a range of services on campus, not just the SU, which offer opportunities. Broaden your horizons personally and socially, as well as academically. I'm your SU president. I've taken the long road. I've been a dropout and now I'm a graduate and I wish you all the success in your journeys. Madam Chancellor, distinguished guests, fellow members of the university and friends and supporters of our community. My name is Peter Green and I have the great privilege and good fortune to be the Dean of Chapel and Chaplain of the University. I've been asked to address two topics. Firstly, because the excellent Dr. Jack Cunningham has been called away on an emergency, I'm to say a word about Robert Grossetest. And secondly, to say something about chaplaincy. So for my first task, a word about the very remarkable Robert Grossetest. Let's begin by clearing up a genuine misapprehension. Firstly, Robert Grossetest, despite his name, which I'm sure you already know, means big head, was not a member of staff of Hogwarts School. I really have come across somebody who thought that was the case. He really existed. He died on this day, or the night between this day and tomorrow, 766 years ago and his mortal remains are in a chantry chapel just a few meters away over there. I urge you to go and visit his tomb if you have a chance and glean some of the information on display about his connection to the world of education. Secondly, there's not much dispute that Grossetest was something of a genius who was at the cutting edge of the scientific and intellectual life of the Europe of his time, a truly international figure. And his ideas about the origins of the universe are being treated by contemporary scientists as precursors of Big Bang theory. And I don't mean the TV series. He taught in the Franciscan House in Oxford University in those days, Oxford was in Lincoln Diocese, and he effectively became the first Chancellor of Oxford University. 
Thirdly, he combined his huge intellectual talents with tremendous moral courage, fearlessly challenging corruption in church and state from the highest to the lowest, and often in the teeth of some fierce opposition, even here in this cathedral. Fourthly, he exemplified in his own life that it was possible to challenge the social structures of the time that would have denied people like him the opportunity of a higher education. He came from a socially humble background at a time when class barriers were even harder to defeat than they are now. And finally, and for some, the most important question is the one I'm most frequently asked. As far as I'm concerned, there is no official pronunciation of his name. <laughs> it may come as no surprise to you that nobody today speaks his native Anglo-Norman language as a mother tongue. So you have a choice of so-called official pronunciations, from grotest to gross tet to grossetester. You may have already gathered the pronunciation that I personally favor. But if you remember nothing else from this thumbnail sketch of that extraordinary man, remember this. If you're going to name an educational establishment after anybody, Robert Grossetest is a very good candidate. A great thinker, a great educator, and a great pastor. And now for my second topic. I ask you to turn your attention to how you feel now, at this moment, at the beginning of a new stage of your educational experience. I want to reinforce some things that you've already heard, and I want to reinforce them because they're important. I was very relieved to hear the President of the Students' Union a few minutes ago disabusing you of the illusion that your time at university will be the happiest days of your life. The people who say this mean well, they usually say it to reassure nervous new students. However, I can think of a number of reasons for saying otherwise. For example, if you are about to embark on the happiest years of your life whilst you are at university, is it all downhill from the moment you return here to graduate? I hope not. Another reason I disagree is that I suspect that most of us who have engaged in studying in higher education and what the Vice Chancellor has said and what the President of the Students' Union has said confirms this. They will report that the experience of higher education can at times be very stressful. So why do some say that these will be the happiest days of your life? I think that they mean something subtly different. It's possible that you are embarking on what I hope will be some of the most enriching experiences of your life. At this very moment, as has already been said, you may be sitting in close proximity to people who will become lifelong friends. At this very moment, you may be entering into an experience that will change the whole way in which you see the world, that you will be about to acquire a much deeper sense of life's complexities and wonders. But for most of us, as you've already heard, the wonderful things that higher education gave us often come packaged up with stresses and strains, many of which could not be avoided. That has certainly been my experience of it so far. In case you think I'm raining on your parade, 
I have long since lost count of the number of people I have met who have said that whatever the stresses and strains, they were worth it in the end. That has certainly been my experience. So what's the role of chaplaincy in all this? There may be many of you who are wondering what chaplaincy is and whether it has anything to offer you. I could go into some detail explaining the big idea that underlies chaplaincy. It's an idea that Robert Grossetest would have recognized in the 13th century and that owes a debt to some of the ideas that he championed. But I'm not going to drag you through that. Those of you who have a previous experience of chaplaincy elsewhere may not need much explanation of what we're about, but I suspect you will be in the minority. For the rest, one of the greatest fears you may have is the assumption that it is the purpose of the chaplaincy to recruit you into my religious worldview. Those who engage with the chaplaincy will have heard me refer far too frequently to the free food that a member of the chaplaincy may well offer you. We are prepared for the fact that you may cast a suspicious look on the tray of cookies that we offer you with the assumption that it is the bait on the hook to get you into some kind of brainwashing program. All I can say is that if you are offered free food by a member of the chaplaincy team, they will not use this as an excuse to try and convert you to something. The only thing they want from you is the pleasure of seeing you enjoy a free snack. The food you are offered may not be good for your waistline, but that's another matter. What is more, the person offering the free food may not have any religious affiliation. Our chaplaincy team consists of a pleasingly diverse range of outlooks on religion. Some have a religious affiliation and some don't. Chaplaincy has two dimensions which are wholly separate. One is explicitly religious. It involves worship and debate about religious ideas and helping members of our university make a connection with a local worshipping community whose tradition they share or which they wish to explore. In this aspect of chaplaincy, we seek to help all members of our community irrespective of their religious affiliation. The other dimension to chaplaincy has no explicit religious content whatsoever. If you want to come paintballing with us, or on a trip to the opera, if you want to go to the kitty cafe, or go trampolining, if you want to play board games, or come to our craft club, or do the Harry Potter studio tour, or have a weekend away in the Peak District with us, at no point will you be asked to participate in a strange religious ritual. This other dimension is about building friendships and taking a break from the demands of academic work. Finally, there's a dimension to chaplaincy which encompasses both of the ones I've already mentioned. If you're having a bad day, the chaplaincy is one of the many places in the university where you can come and look for support, along with student advice and CELT, along with your personal tutor and others, including the vice chancellor, as you've already heard. One of the things I loved about my first university was that it tried to care for its students. When I had bad days, when I was first a student, I knew that there were people who cared and wanted to help. It's why I remember my first university with such gratitude. And I hope that's what you're going to find here, including in the chaplaincy. In other words, you may not at this moment be embarking 
on the happiest days of your life. But my hope for you is that you are embarking on what will be one of the most intensely enriching experiences of your life. And I also hope that I will be back here in the cathedral on the day you graduate. One of the things I want to see is the joy on your face when you are back here, not just in a gown, but in gown, hood, and cap. If you don't believe you will make it that far, please come and see us. We believe you can do it, and we want you to succeed, and we want to do anything we can to help.
I now call upon the Reverend Canon Alex Whitehead to come forward. Madam Chancellor, I present to you for the award of Honorary Life Fellow of Bishop Grosteste University, the Reverend Canon Matthew Alexander Whitehead. A fellowship is offered to those members of the public who have made a substantial contribution to the life of the university over many years. We normally award these at graduation ceremonies in the summer, but unfortunately Canon Whitehead was not here in the summer uh, although his biography was printed in the programme. Alex has benefited from a university education, having attended the universities of Leeds, Birmingham, Newcastle and Durham. He was a parish priest for a number of years and has been involved in the training of priests. His main connections with BG are the following. He was chaplain at one time, helping out for an extended period during a vacancy, he is a regular member of the BGU choir. I'm not sure if you were singing. You weren't singing there. <laughs> and he has sung at graduations and choirs festivals for many years. Alex is currently a trustee of the Students' Union, but above all, he is a great supporter and friend of the university. And for that reason, Madam Chancellor, I am delighted to present him as a candidate for the Award of Life Fellow. to introduce a current student who was sitting where you are last year, Emily Winfield, who is a second year student studying for a BSc in Education Studies and Mathematics. Emily. I'm Emily and I'm a second year Education Studies and Mathematics student at BGU. It's hard to believe that a year has passed since my matriculation ceremony. A year full of self-growth, laughter and challenges that I have seized and relished. When I first arrived at university, my self-confidence was at rock bottom and I wouldn't have had the courage to stand and speak to you all in Thinking Cathedral today despite a love for being on the stage. But here I am, happier and more confident than ever before, and already certain that this year is going to be even better than the last. Opportunities I have embraced, such as our Student Ambassador Programme, Performing Arts Society, and events run by the Students' Union, have allowed me to create an amazing network of friends and have helped me to become less of a workaholic, although my flatmates would still probably disagree. Academically, the passion and dedication of my tutors has allowed me to progress in ways that I had never imagined possible in one year. And I'm now known among the ambassadors as the one that truly loves maths, which speaks for itself, really. So, yes, in your first year, there may be the odd assignment that you find tricky or a day where you begin to feel overwhelmed by the hectic university lifestyle. But take advantage of the university's incredible support systems, throw yourself into the BGU community, and you will flourish. Thank you, and good luck to you all. and gentlemen, uh, you might have noticed a little bit of noise off stage during this matriculation ceremony. That is the building work for Lincoln Cathedral Connect, a big HLF funded project that's been part of my life here at the Cathedral over the last seven years. I'm now in the delivery stage. 
As you start at this university, that work will progress. By the time you're midway through, hopefully you'll be enjoying the hospitality and welcome. And when you leave here, you'll be able to go around there and have a glass of champagne and celebrate your success. We're building something. You start building your futures at this university. You will start building friendships and you will build on the foundation of what you have already learned. And I also hope you'll go forth from this church, developing yourselves, but also developing the gift to give to others something that you have to offer as well. I finish off just by a prayer for you and asking for God's blessing on you, those whom you know and love, and those who will get to know and love during your time here at this university. May God bless you in all that you do. May you know his light and his hope in your friendships and in your learning. And may God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, bless you this day and always. Amen. matriculation ceremony closed. Welcome to the university and thank you for joining us. I invite all those present to stand. Matriculating students, we ask you to join the procession and to stay for the traditional group photograph while guests remain in their places. You will be able to meet up on the East Green when directed.